So here is part four of the practice of preaching. In this particular program, I want to take a look at Ephesians chapter four. Because starting at verse eight, it says, Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led captive a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. The Greek word is doma. It does mean gifts. So now we're talking about Christ ascending up on high, and then he gave gifts to men, and those gifts are about to be expanded, elucidated for us. Now this expression, that he ascended, what does it mean except that he is also descended into the lower parts of the earth? Verse 10, he who descended is himself also who ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. Okay, that's sort of a parenthetical kind of comment that Paul includes in verses 9 and 10. Verse 11, here are the gifts that God gave. And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. Now, what was the purpose for which he gave those gifts to men. Well, he gave them, verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the service, to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Okay, now the reason I bring that passage up is because it's very clear in saying that God gave gifts to the church. He gave gifts to mankind. When Christ ascended, he didn't just leave us to our own devices. Instead, he gifted particular men in order to lead his church, in order to teach his church. And these are gift ministries to the church for the purpose of building up the saints and for teaching doctrine and to bringing us all to the unity of the faith until we're all mature, grown-up Christians. Now, I said all that to say that I really believe there's only one reason that anyone should even be in the ministry. People join the ministry for lots of reasons. Maybe they went to Bible school, they've got some time in in seminary, and then they choose the ministry as a career path. Or perhaps uh, their family influenced them, and they had a grandfather who was a priest, and so, Johnny, you should be a priest too. So they choose it, again, as a career. Sometimes people join the ministry because they like the lights and they like the way their voice sounds through the microphone. They like the being the best lit, loudest person in the room. Or they might think that a preacher in a big church has political influence and they would like that. Some preachers have actually become famous in America Hard as that is to believe, but they like the idea of fame, and so they chase it through the ministry. But like I said, there's only one reason that anybody should ever go into the ministry, and that's because you can't help it. I tell people all the time, if there is something else that you can do, if you're capable of doing it, and mentally capable. I mean, What I mean is you can do it like it's allowable for you to go do something else, be a plumber, be a doctor, be a lawyer. If you're capable of doing that, go do it. Do not join the ministry unless you just can't help it. Because when God draws a man to the ministry, when God decides that a person is going to uh, handle his word and is going to be the under-shepherd watching over God's own sheep, well, then God makes sure to enable those people with the gifts necessary to teach his word and to care for his people and to lead his church. And if God has not gifted you, if God has not put you into the ministry very specifically, then, then get out, stay out, because there are a lot of people 
being very honest here, there are a lot of people who are doing a great deal of damage. And as often as not, I have to unwind the things that people have learned in their former churches. And the process of unlearning all the tradition and the bad teaching of their former church life is really uh, difficult for some people. It's, it's a bit of a hindrance for some people. And so this would be solved, obviously, if the church, which belongs to Jesus Christ, would be led by people that Jesus Christ has chosen rather than people who entered the ministry for some other reason. I, uh, I talked to a friend. This goes back a little ways. But whenever I hear that a young person is thinking about joining the ministry, or even an older person, they're thinking about joining the ministry, I do my dead level best to talk them out of it. And so I had a conversation with a friend a couple of years ago who said, why do you do that? Why do you try to talk people out of the ministry? Don't you want more people in the ministry? And the truth is, I do. I do want more people in the ministry, called people in the ministry. I wish that there was a Grace Church on every street corner in America. But the reason that I try to talk people out of it and have successfully talked a couple people out of the ministry is because the ministry, by its very nature, encounters a great deal of opposition. It's a hard job. It's not just teaching on Sunday morning. It's a 24-hour-a-day job in which you engage in people's lives, and people share their lives with you, which is a tremendous compliment. I'm always happy and complimented when people want to share their lives with me, but it can be overwhelming. It can be so much. So it's a difficult job. And then, like I said, there's the opposition, not just opposition from without, not just opposition from cynics and atheists, but there's a tremendous amount of opposition within the church. If you preach what the Bible actually says, if you're not afraid of words like election and predestination, foreordination, if you're not afraid of what the Bible does teach about God's sovereignty, then there are going to be a great many Christians who are going to oppose you. And so we're going to get opposition from within and from without. And it really is a very tough job. If you're doing it right, if you're giving yourself away on the behalf of other people, then it really is a hard job. So I think that if I can talk someone out of it in 15, 20 minutes, they weren't called to it. Because the first time opposition arises, they're going to leave. And then again, think of all the damage that's been done. So, according to the Bible, God has given some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And he's given them for the work of the ministry, for the completion of the saints, so that we all grow up in the unity of the faith. And that's the purpose for which any man should join the ministry is because God has called you, God has chosen you, and God has placed you. I heard an old preacher years ago say, the proof that God has called any man to preach is that he also calls people to hear him. Now, even though that's not in the Bible anywhere, it kind of makes sense. If God calls a man to preach, it's for the purpose of taking care of his church, teaching, and leading, and guiding, and raising up his church. And so if God calls a man to preach, to lead in his church, he will also call people to hear that man. So if that's the case, going back to square one, if it is God who has called you, if it is God who has assigned you, and if it is God who has called people to hear you, well, then what are you going to tell them? What are you going to use as your, as your guiding principle? Well, that has to be the Bible. That has to be the Word of God. Otherwise, you're just leading people astray. So, 
we began with the Bible. The Bible is sufficient. The Bible is everything people need to know in order to achieve their full and complete eternal salvation. It will lead them to faith in Christ. The way that we read and understand the Bible is via the face value hermeneutic that we talked about in the last video. And the only reason to be the person at the front of the church, uh, the only reason to put yourself in the position where you're handling the Word of God on the behalf of other people, well, on the behalf of God to other people, the only reason that you should be in the ministry at all is because you can't help it. If you can do something else, go do it. But if you can't do anything else, then devote yourself to it. And that's the only reason to do it. Does that make sense? I think so. Anyway, I'll talk to you next time.